Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought it would be fun to take a look at this stamp set that I have with the little kitties and kind of reimagine this and turn it into a little kitty Christmas tree. So let's take a look at the stamp set that we're going to be using. So let me first show you this set. This is called the Christmas Kitty Flip Card and this is designed to create a flip card. There's a separate die that allows you to create this little mechanism, but you have the front facing kitties on the front of the card and the back facing kitties on the inside of the card. And again, that die to do that flipping is a separate die. So we're not going to create that flip card today. What I thought I would do is reimagine this stamp set and do something different with it. So you also get that sentiment that says sending you warm wishes. I've got some Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock and I've got my sticky mat in my Misty stamp positioner. So that'll hold this in place for us while we do some stamping. So I'm going to stamp the front and back of the kitties and then we'll stamp the front again another time. I'm just leaving enough room at the top of that cardstock so I can stamp that three times. So let's go ahead and ink that up with some Versafine Onyx Black Ink. I've got my stamp pendable stamp press to press that out. And then now we can go ahead and stamp that the front of those kitties one more time. So we'll have two of the front facing ones and one of the back facing ones. I'm cleaning off that stamp really well. And then let me just position this down and you don't have to worry about lining these up or anything. Now that is another way to create this card. You could just mask off your kitties and stamp them, but it, I did try it and it was a little bit difficult to do because these are so very detailed. So I thought this was the easier way. I'm taking some detailed scissors. I'm going to follow the lines on these stamps and I'm going to go ahead and for this first grouping of kitties, I'm going to cut out all four of those. Now, for the second grouping, we just need three, because again, remember, we're going to create that tree shape. So we just need three of those kitties, and I'm just kind of trying to pick the ones that would be easy, easy to separate here. So I'm going to just cut off that end one, and then I'll go ahead and trim all around those. And then for the last set that, again, is facing forward, I'm going to just cut two of these. And again, I'm just trying to pick out the easiest place to make that cut. So the bottom ones face forward, the middle ones face backwards, and the, the top ones face forward. But you could certainly do them all facing forward if you prefer that. I'm going to quickly color these in with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. I've added a little sugared almond pink to the cheeks and the ears the light gray for the fur, and I'm going to keep them all in the light gray. I'm following a little bit on the packaging, and I'll show you that here in a second, which Art Impressions does a great job with the packaging, so it's really easy to follow along. If you're not sure what colors to color things in, they give you some great examples on the packaging. I'm just going to show you coloring in a couple of these and then everything else would be the same. I'm just going to keep mixing and matching my colors. So the palette we're going for is going to be brown, a little bit of brown, some reds and greens, very similar to the packaging that comes with the stamp set. The only additional color I'll be adding in is a little bit of turquoise green as well. So here I've got the May green. I'm going to add that. And then I've got a little bit of the dark green. And keep in mind, the colors are in the upper left-hand corner as we're going along. And they're also listed on my blog. And all of the products I'm using today are listed and linked down below and on my blog. Now, these little sweaters that they're wearing, you can do so much with. You can add polka dots or stripes or anything you want. You can get very creative with these. 
We'll be coming in at the end with a white gel pen and we'll add a little bit more detail to these. Now I've switched over to the deep red. And again, I'm kind of adding the color to each side and then pulling that in. I'm not going to worry about that little pattern on the sweater because again, later on, I'm going to use a white gel pen to fill in some of those little patterned areas, those little diamond shapes. But right now, I'm just worried about blending out the color. And then here's where I'm going to start adding a little bit of that turquoise green. And for the sweater on this one, I'll be using the beige. Now for some shadowing on some of these colors, for the, the uh, May green, I used a little bit of deep green for shadowing. And for the beige, I used a little bit of the mid-brown. Now our background, when we do the scene, we're going to be using some craft cardstock. We're going to use a, a craft color polka dot paper for the background. So that's why I thought I'd bring in a little bit of these brown tones, just to tie everything together. Now I finished all the rest of the coloring off camera, and now I'm just going to use my white gel pen just to add some of those little details to the sweaters. And you do want to wait till these are dry to add your white gel pen because if it's not completely dry, it might pick up a little of the color from underneath. So I like to wait until they're dry and then my white gel pen will stay nice and white. So you can see there on that red sweater, I added those little details back in with the white gel pen. And on that turquoise scarf, I added a few little polka dots. So this is a really fun place to personalize all of these little kitties. And again, I used all the same colors over and over again. I just uh, mixed and matched them on all the different cats. So now for our background, we're going to use the mini paper pack. This is brand new. And we're going to use that piece there, but this is a double sided paper. And we're going to use this kind of crafty color one with the white dots on it. And let me give you a quick peek at this. That plaid there I'm going to be using on a card in the future. So keep an eye out for that. And so you get a really nice collection of papers in this paper pack. And the designs are tiny. So it's perfect for your little small images. I've got the A2 rectangle double stitch dies from Art Impressions. I'm going to go ahead and run that largest one through my die cutting machine. Now to ink up the edges, I'm using the archival ink. This is the Tim Holtz archival ink, and this is the ground espresso. I'm going to use a little sponge dauber to do my blending. I don't want to come in too far from the edges, I'm trying to keep that blending kind of out towards the edges. And since this is an archival ink, it is a permanent ink. And you do want to use a permanent ink to do your blending because this paper has a little bit of a sheen to it. And if you use a regular dye ink, it might not dry on this cardstock. So keep that in mind when you're doing some blending. So although this has those pretty white polka dots on it, I'm going to add a little bit more of a white spatter. I've got my bleed proof white ink. I'm going to place some on my glass media mat. I'll spritz that with a little bit of water from my distress sprayer. And then I'll go ahead and spatter this panel. That again is just going to bring a little bit of a more of a snowy look to this and just kind of break up that pattern of the polka dots a little bit. You certainly can skip this part if you don't want to do this. I just like, I always like spattering, so I just think that is really pretty. So now I've got my Pixie Dust Sparkle cardstock from Lawn Fawn. This is so pretty. I use this a lot. I love this cardstock. I'm going to take that smallest star, and this is from the Lawn Fawn Stitched Star Frames. And that will have a pretty stitched border around it. So let's go ahead and die cut that. I'll run it through the Sizzix Sidekick die cutting machine. I'm just running it through a couple of times just to make sure it 
cuts through that sparkle cardstock. Now for the card base, we're making a standard A2 size card. So I've started with a piece of cardstock that measures four and a quarter by 11 inches, and I scored it at five and a half inches. So that'll be a top folding card. I'm going to add that panel using some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, and that'll fit right on top of our card. Now we can go ahead and add our little kitties. Now again, I want them to look like they're kind of, because their hands are up in the air, they're perfect for this, because they look like they're holding something up. Now normally in the flip card, it would look like they were holding up the sentiment, but we're going to have them holding each other up. So I've got some 3D foam tape. I'm going to add it to the back of all of these. We're going to pop this up a little bit just for a little bit more interest. And then what you want to do is remove the backing from that tape, and then we're going to line these up. So we're going to start with that row of four. And then when I place that second grouping on, we're going to try to kind of have their feet on the hands of the grouping underneath them. So just play around with that a little bit. So it kind of looks like they're holding them up. So don't leave a gap between the feet and the, the little hands which I should probably say their little paws, not their little hands, but you guys know what I mean. And then here again, I'm going to do the same thing, just trying to find a place to set their little feet down. Now we'll have them just putting that star at the top of the tree. I'm going to add some foam tape to our little star. Now later on, I did cut a little slit in the paw of that little kitty at the top on the left and kind of slid that star in between his hands. I did that off camera, but you will see that at the end. Got these beautiful sequins from Buttons Galore and more. This is the Holly sequin mix. And what's really cool in this set is you get these little holly leaves. So I'm going to place the holly leaves down first. Got my pickup tool there, and then I'll place a couple of sequins, one on top of another. I'm going to start with that larger red sequin, and then I'll place one of the white ones right in the center. So that would just dress up this little star really well. Let's let those dry. I decided at this point that I thought that the first row of kitties needed to be standing on something. So I've got the Valentine's paper pack, and again, this is a double-sided paper pad, and I use this all the time. I, it's really pretty. I love the pinks and the reds. So I'm going to just need a little place for them to be standing. So I'm just going to cut and that'll give me a little stitch border around the three sides of that panel. Now I had already uh, used that foam squares to or that foam tape to pop those up. So it did require a little bit of effort to just pull those up so I could slide this panel right in underneath. And then wherever that foam adhesive came out, I just replaced it after I got this in place. But it really wasn't that difficult to do. But if you are going to make this card, you may want to do this before you put your little kitties down. But I thought that added a lot, just bringing in that little bit of pink and white stripe. So now that that's all set, I'm going to take my Wink of Stella glitter pen. This is just a clear glitter pen, and I'm going to add some sparkle to all of these little items. Now you do want to clean that off in between colors because these are water-based markers that we used, and you do want to be careful when you're applying it that you're not moving your ink around too much after you spent so much time doing your blending. So I just kind of dab it on, and then I clean it between colors. And to clean it, you just scribble it onto some scrap paper. So let me give you a closer look at the finished card. And there, I think you can see, I put a little slit between the paws on that left-hand kitty at the top, and I kind of tucked that corner of the star down in there. So keep in mind that all the products I've used today are listed and linked down below and also on my blog. And I hope you get a chance to reimagine some of the stamp sets that you may already have. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Thank you so much for joining me today. 
I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.